Over 285 years ago, Benjamin Franklin founded the first U.S. Volunteer Fire Department. Since then, over 20,000 stations and 600,000 members have joined the force. Working non-stop for 365 days of the year, these men and women dedicate their lives to keeping their neighbors safe. I'm uh, Joe Parati. I'm one of the uh, second assistant chiefs here at the Glen Island Volunteer Fire Company. My name is Michelle Calvario, and my day job is I work as a nurse practitioner. I'm the director of marketing for Green Ridge Farm, which is a meat and cheese company. I'm the third generation of a property and casualty insurance agent. So what inspired you or motivated you to join the volunteer fire department in the first place? I was brought up, you know, like most people, about giving back, giving service service to your neighbors, service to other people. It would always be uh, something that stuck with me if I knew it was a volunteer company and I saw the fire engine go by to a call and I, I wasn't on it. Just the desire to you know give back and support the community along with my uh, love of the fire service, at least what I thought I knew of it. So could you go into the process that a probationary has to go through to become a member? We go through an extensive basic operations firefighter class, learning all the to all the all the tools, all the basic tasks, uh, from how to roll the hose, how to deploy the hose, how to throw a ladder, uh, how to cut a hole in the roof, how to how to vent the windows, how to do search and rescue, uh, how to overhaul after a fire. Uh, probation members go through all those tasks uh, along the way during that that uh, that twelve to eighteen month period. The mandatory trainings were Sunday mornings and Monday evenings. Uh, those were the mandatory and still are to, to um, come to both. And then as far as the process over the 14 month probationary period that I had, uh, there were some weeks where I was gone six to seven nights a week or days you know, during the week. Um, other days that were just lighter just because of my schedule or, or other individual schedules that kept me away. So it really did vary throughout the 14 months. On average, probably five nights a week. So I would say in total, it's probably eight to 10 hours a week, uh, sometimes it's more, and that's just the training. So I've got two young kids, uh, so my wife uh, gets an amazing amount of credit uh, because we're dealing with that at home and, and having fun with that, and then the pager goes off and I have to go. With regards to family life, I, I, I'll say my, I, have a, I have an understanding wife, and she's learned to accept that this is uh, a big passion of mine, and uh, she'd probably tell you that, uh, that I probably might pick this place over her, which I'm not sure is true, but uh, the, the, the family has, has adjusted over the years and they've learned that, you know, it may be, you know, Christmas dinner and this pager goes off and I got to go. And uh, my mother-in-law has accepted the <laughs> Thanksgiving. She hears the pager go off and goes, oh, there he goes. It's definitely physically challenging, um, but I think mentally, just some of the things that they ask of you, it's, it's not something that adults are used to. It's the kind of thing that a lot of people haven't done since school, like memorizing every single piece of equipment that's on um, all, all of these different you know, engines and trucks or um, memorizing maps and streets. And uh, In addition to that, they're, they're doing things like driving the vehicles. Uh, ultimately, they're, they're going to be a pump operator on the vehicle uh, and they're going to do aerial operations with the vehicle. So those are all things we're also working on with, with probationary members. With regards to company members, uh, still a lot of those same tasks and it's not so much teaching them at that point but it's more drills and reinforcing them and doing a lot of scenario based uh, drills where we can we'll get a house or tons of a structure or whatever we have to you know to use at that time and we try to you know, re you know, make a scenario and recreate as much as we can obviously without uh, live fire conditions. Each seat on the engine pretty much um, and, and on the trucks has a job so if you're sitting in that seat you know what you're going to do when you get to a call. Um, depending on the call you might be carrying tools like uh, an axe and something to pry open a door or you might be carrying like a fire extinguisher or a pump can full of water. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, you know, you can't choose family, you can't choose your fellow firefighters, but the, I think the thing that's great here is everybody gets it because we're all volunteers, right? So like everybody understands what you're going through or what the commitment is. Everyone knows my family and it's been really fun to like make good friends here uh, that have gotten to know me outside of the fire station. It's very rewarding and it's given back way more than I've ever put in and I know I put a lot in. You know, it just feels right. It just feels like, um, you know, we moved to this new town and we were looking for a connection to our town and meeting people and really feeling invested in it. And it's other than my parents' house, it's the first place that it's really felt like home. As long as we're in Glen Ellen, I will certainly uh, be part of the fire company um, until I physically can't do it anymore, which hopefully is a long, long time. Um, and I think at this point, even if we moved, it would be even harder to leave Glen Ellen because I've joined the fire company. This fire company has served the village of Glen Ellen since 1907. So I think that if I'm doing my math right, it's 115 years now uh, and it's served it well uh, and hopefully we'll continue to do so uh, into the future.